The year is 2004. Chelsea, one year out of being acquired by a certain Russian billionaire, have been going on a bit of a shopping spree. On the grocery list? Well, every position available, really. And the results? Well, the results speak for themselves. I, must, I think I'm a special one. Blue is the colour! Chelsea is the name on the Premiership trophy! Amongst all the players and positions that were swept up, one which they eventually lucked out on in the long term is the striker position. Didier Drogba. The Ivorian was a mainstay at Chelsea for eight very fruitful years where he won it all before leaving in 2012. He even came back a couple years later because I guess he just hadn't had his fill yet. Now here's the kicker. Drogba was not the first striker Abramovich brought in. Dating back to before he arrived and going on well after his retirement, for some reason, big money striker signings and Chelsea have not always been the most compatible pair. From Hernan Crespo to Andrei Shevchenko to Fernando Torres to Romelu Lukaku, apart from a few exceptions, because that's exactly what they are, exceptions, the nine at Chelsea hasn't had the best of luck in recent years. Here's some stats for you. Since 2003, Chelsea have spent just shy of £500 million on strikers. Only three of these players have scored more than 11 goals in a single season for them. Oof. And I haven't even included players that were loaned to them on this list, such as Radamal Falcao, Pato, and Gonzalo Higuain. Spoiler alert, none of them did too well either. Today, we're going to recount the tales of just some of these disappointing tenures to understand what went down and maybe get to the bottom of all of this. So with that being said, is the number 9 at Chelsea cursed? Yo, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinashe and welcome back to another Football Iconic video. First things first, I just want to note that I'm well aware that as far as curses go, this is definitely not the worst affliction to have. I certainly wouldn't mind a curse that produces a handful of trophies, including the big UCL, in very recent times. Nonetheless, it's still very strange that this is the case. Over the years, Chelsea have signed very many previously elite forwards that have turned out to be subpar for them, as the previous list showed. However, in this video, what I want to do is I want to focus on some of the more high profile signings that have shown how prominent this curse really is over at Stamford Bridge. But first, quick word from the sponsor of today's video. Do you guys like fantasy football? Of course you do. Do you always lose your fantasy football league? Of course you do. Don't lie to me. I know the truth. I also know why you keep losing. Having to manage a team week in, week out, all year? Oof. That's rough. But luckily, Spitch, the sponsor of today's video, has a pretty nifty solution to that problem. Spitch is a daily fantasy football manager that pits you against your mates, family, or even members of your very own football community. Each week, you can create a brand new team, new formations and all, from a vast array of top tier competitions. The Premier League, the Bundesliga, the Champions League, even the Copa Libertadores. They're all there. The app uses a comprehensive statistical point system to track your performance, and winners with the most points can even win real money. If any of that sounds good to you, go ahead and use the link in the description to sign up to Spitch today. And if you're so inclined after that, you can use the one below that to join my community, the Iconic League. Thanks again to Spitch for sponsoring this video, let's get back to it. So there are a couple angles that we can approach this one at, but if we want to go for a player that most people would immediately recognize as a true victim of this curse, we have to go back to 2011. In 2010, Chelsea quite impressively won the league by a single point and coupled that with an FA Cup to complete the double. All that sounds good when it comes to the immediate future for the club, right? Perhaps, but there was a bit of a problem. The spine of the squad, in majority, was made up of the remnants of Jose Mourinho's reign over at the bridge. Now, this of course wasn't a huge issue, the squad was very much still competing well. And as a matter of fact, 32-year-old Didier Drogba had just had his greatest ever season in front of goal. 29 goals in the league, 37 in all competitions, and his second golden boot. Nicolas Analka was also still around, and was actually the golden boot winner in the previous campaign. That's not bad, you know? Again, no alarm bells. But at the same time, just like any club, they could always do with some freshening up. So when it came out that Fernando Torres would be open to a move, who could possibly say no to the Spaniard that had been terrorizing the league with Liverpool for years at that point? His pace and power was just far too much for the majority of EPL defenders. Nemanja Vidic would probably be amongst the first to confirm that. 40 million pounds? No dice. A transfer request and a 10 million pound bump in the offer? But what you have is a British transfer record, a few burnt bridges, and some pretty lofty expectations. Only problem was that those expectations were probably too lofty. Torres was elite at one point, 
No doubt about it. 81 goals in 142 games for Liverpool really does speak for itself, you know, as does a great showing for his national team up to that point too. But what several people, I guess including Chelsea, seem to have forgotten was that the man's injury record was alarmingly high. Even further to that, for a guy with an injury record as long as his at 26, he also played an alarmingly high amount of games. Because he was so important to his teams at the time, every single time he was injured, whether it be for Spain or Liverpool, he was rushed back into action. He'd lost almost all of his explosive qualities at that point, and unfortunately for Chelsea, he was nowhere near the player he once was when he came through. In four seasons with Chelsea, he failed to score more than eight goals in a single league campaign. And it's not like he wasn't playing. He was playing all right. Eventually, by 2014, Chelsea decided to loan him out to Milan and then to Atletico before he was eventually fully transferred out in 2016. So yeah, this was definitely a disappointing tenure for everyone that was involved. But at the very least, we'll always have Gary Neville's orgasm in the 2012 UCL semi-finals to remember El Nino by. You know, every now and then I wake up in cold sweats and I wonder, why did he make that noise? While Torres may have failed to live up to expectations, the man who came next made sure Chelsea were a scoring side once more. In 2011, Romelu Lukaku signed for the club from Anderlecht and... <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I couldn't do that one with a straight face. He joined as an 18-year-old and was loaned out for more experience almost immediately after. Plus, his actual chapter in this video is coming up later on. In all seriousness, though, it was Demba Ba who brought glory back to... <laughs> no, no, uh, that's not the one. Okay, but in all seriousness, for real this time, it was Diego Costa who was the next successful leading man for the Blues. Purchased in 2014, the former Brazilian, now Spanish international, is a crazy man in his own right. <laughs> <laughs> but along with the likes of Eden Hazard, he delivered the goods up top when needed. A two-time Premier League champion, getting into the 20s in terms of goals in both title-winning years. Now, he did take a bit of a break in the 15-16 season, but I don't think he should be given too much flack for that, as the rest of his club did too. I believe it was a uh, company policy over at Chelsea FC Holdings Limited. In any case, going into the 17-18 season, Chelsea manager Antonio Conte and Diego Costa had just about had enough of one another. They won the previous campaign together, but had reportedly butted heads at a few points and fallen out quite bad, it seems. Going into the next campaign, Conte apparently sent my guy a text telling him he was not in his plans for the next year. Although, he did thank him for the season, so there is that, I guess. Long story short, it was out with Costa, and in with the courage curse of the number 9 over at the bridge. In the summer of 2017, both Manchester United and Chelsea were in search of a new front man. And of all the targets available, it seemed that only two men were in the running for both teams. Everton's Romelu Lukaku and Real Madrid's Alvaro Morata. As I mentioned earlier, once upon a time, Lukaku was a Chelsea player. However, after yearning for constant game time that didn't include a loan, he permanently moved over to Merseyside and proceeded to absolutely tear it up. 25 goals in the previous year and a proven Premier League talent. If you believe what you see in the news, he was their top choice. Or at least that was the case until United swooped in and snapped him up. Their second choice was a good player. He scored 15 in La Liga for Madrid the previous year. So 60 million pounds sounds like a fair price, right? Right. It very quickly became apparent that the guy was just not suited to the level required for Chelsea. Numbers-wise, he wasn't firing on all cylinders, but he certainly could have been doing worse. 11 goals and 6 assists is definitely decent for someone's first season in the league. But how he actually performed in most games was a whole different story. Weak in the challenge for a big guy, unable to hit a barn door, missing sitters, it wasn't pleasant to watch. But as I always do, it's always important to recognize that things aren't always black and white. Morata was reportedly going through quite a bit in his personal life during his time in England. The passing of friends, a tough pregnancy for his wife, and of course, death threats from a group of silly Chelsea fans, mostly online. All the same, his Chelsea stint only lasted about a year and a half before he was eventually loaned out and then sold to Atletico Madrid in 2020. Somehow, these guys paid Chelsea 58 million pounds for him. How on earth have Chelsea pulled this one off? I gotta say, at this point, Morata has been passed around so much, I'm starting to suspect money laundering. Uh, for legal reasons, that was a joke. Chelsea were understandably frustrated with the man. 
and if it weren't for the brilliance of Eden Hazard, who knows where they would have been in that period. It's a good thing uh, he's, he's only gone from strength to strength in the years since. In 2020, Chelsea were not only looking to end the curse that had plagued them for so long, but also revamp the entire squad. Cash was splashed, and £220 million worth of players were brought into the club, 47 million of which was allocated to one Timo Werner from RB Leipzig. 28 goals in the Bundesliga and only denied the crown of top scorer thanks to Lewandowski. <laughs> Quick, with a deadly finishing touch and some good positioning, Chelsea had finally found their man. Werner is and was good evidently from before he arrived, but for some reason he just didn't gel with the Chelsea squad, much like many of his predecessors. Hardworking and energetic, yes, but offering very little in terms of physicality and aerial prowess. Also, he had this weird tendency to drift and stay out wide when he would have been a lot more useful in the box, something which led to him playing as a winger almost as frequently as he did as a striker. 10 goals in two full seasons for the man and Werner open goal miss compilations on YouTube was quite a booming niche not too long ago. He definitely had an elite return. So elite that as of 2022, he is once again an RB Leipzig player. To be completely fair to the man, he won a Champions League and he wasn't terrible on the wing when he started there. But all the same, given his record beforehand and how much money Chelsea paid for the guy, I'm pretty sure he wasn't brought in to play out wide. This wasn't a very good transfer. Next up, I'm not even going to try to explain what's going on here. The person that made this meme is going straight to hell. The year before Werner made his Chelsea exit, it was finally time for Big Rom to come home. From United to Inter and then to Chelsea as a Serie A champion for £97 million. He proved he could play and be dominant in Italy, so I think a lot of people, not gonna lie, myself included, were expecting him to crack on and finally make things right in England. That was of course before we remembered that the guy has a history of kissing every badge he plays for, speaking out against his team and managers when things aren't going his way, and having the first touch of a trampoline. Physically, I am fine, but I am not happy with the situation at Chelsea. Tuchel has chosen to play with another system. I have always said that I have Inter in my head. I know I will return to Inter, I really hope so. I am in love with Italy. Bro said this four months after coming back to Chelsea. What in the world? Six months later, he got his wish. Back to Inter on loan. The man signed for Chelsea in 2011 was loaned out because he wasn't good enough and returned to Chelsea 10 years later with a point to prove just to be loaned out because he wasn't good enough. Tough. Alright, so this is editor Tinashe speaking here. As I was finishing this video up, Chelsea went ahead and signed Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So everything that I was about to say and that I'd written up pretty meticulously about how Chelsea weren't going to have a striker this season and maybe that would affect them badly, maybe it wouldn't, kind of had to be scrapped. In any case, uh, here we are. This is a, a pretty much a definition of a last minute signing. History shows that those have a tendency of not working out too well in the long term, but at the same time, who knows? Time will tell, so let's reserve our judgment for later. And there we have it. It's been quite a wild ride watching Chelsea throw all this money at previously successful strikers just to be, and mind my French, shafted almost every single time. But what do you guys think about this situation? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Also, feel free to follow me on all the socials, links are in the description. And uh, yeah, that's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.